The last shadow property found within your light settings is shadow bias. And what this actually does is this takes your shadow and pushes it a little bit away from the source of the casting object. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, the answer is sometimes there will be errors in your shadows. It's just kind of the way it works. And you can use bias to clean up those errors, but it can be a little bit of a trade-off, especially with objects that are a little bit thin. Here's an example. If we hit play and look around in our level, take a look at that back wall back there in the distance. You see that really funky uh, moir effect kind of thing that's going on back there? That is what I would consider to be a shadow error. Now, looking at it, just as we are right now, I'm going to hit Control-Shift-P and pause our playback. And then we're going to take a look at our shadow bias for the sun. Now, as I push the bias outward a little more, you'll notice that that problem is going away. In fact, we can get it to smooth out entirely. But now, direct your attention to this little vertical block that's standing in front of us and take a look at its shadow. The shadow now no longer touches the base of the object. In fact, it looks like that block is floating. I can assure you that block is not floating. <laughs> uh, it is sitting flat on the ground, but keep an eye down here on the base of that block as I bring the bias back around. And now we get the shadow right where it was. But obviously, with a bias of zero, we start getting these anomalies all over the place. So usually, a bias of zero just won't be viable at all. You're going to have to find a nice balance. Now, an easy way to solve the problem is to just make sure that you don't have any objects that are so thin where this is going to be present. Or if you absolutely have to, find some way to cover it up at the base. So have something down there that just makes sure that the player never sees the fact that that shadow never quite makes it back to the casting object. Right. Where this can really get problematic is going to be in levels that are indoors that have a lot of walls with intersections. You can see... Um, basically what looks like light bleed underneath your wall or in the seam. So you have to be very careful with this and adjust your bias so you get the best results that uh, is a trade-off with what you can get with light artifacts. Right. And, I mean, in a lot of those indoor settings, you know, you're not going to necessarily need to have uh, real-time lighting all the time. So you may be able to get away with something baked, which will alleviate this problem. But it's just something that... You need to be aware of that you can run into shadowing artifacts. Bias will help you fix those artifacts, but it comes at the trade-off of pushing your shadows away, so you have to be really careful with how you use it. That will wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.